I, I think that it, it's a balance. I mean, the, I've worked with people who have very varied graduate backgrounds. Um, you know, I think if you want to be, you know, an academic economist, you have to get an economics PhD. I mean, but I think for other types of of ways of being involved in public policy, I think it, I think it really depends. I don't, I don't think you can go. I don't know what schools are good at, are good for food policy, but I don't. You can't go wrong going to a really good school for food policy. I think if you wanted a, a broader sort of public policy education, then I guess you would probably want to go to a, you know, then. But I think it's a balance. And then my only thought would be, I think you should look at the school as a whole, because as much as, as much as you may love or be interested in food policy now, you may find other things that you're interested in while you're there. And having a diverse you know, program or an institute that gives you a lot of those options, I think, can be very beneficial. Just as a quick piggyback, I'm, I'm currently in law school now. It's a few years off. Um, and I have a public policy focus myself. Um, I think it's really important to kind of work in an area if you can for, for at least a little while before uh, going into school. It, in a lot of ways, it allows you to know exactly what you're focusing on um, and why you're going. So for instance, law school is great for policy stuff if you need to do a lot of statutory analysis stuff. It, it, whenever you're doing uh, uh, lobbying, to be able to look at a statute or a regula uh, regulatory issue and know why it's important or what it's doing um, you know, certain certain programs are great at certain statistic uh, statistics and, and math skills that are, are really really important if you have data heavy focused job and you're really interested in those things. But you're not going to know that until you start working, uh, oftentimes. So I, I don't think it's a hundred percent a bad idea to go straight to grad school, but it's really often a really good idea to do some work uh, so that you know what you like and what you would like to do based on. I just want to chime in. Um, so I heard part of what John said, and I, and I think part of what it was was take some time to work in the arena that you're interested in. Yeah. And I can't second that enough. Um, I was on the admissions committee. There were two uh, student members, or maybe there were a couple more, um, on the admissions committee at Fletcher. And it, Fletcher, a lot of people came who wanted to do public policy afterwards. And really, for professional schools of international affairs, it's hard to get in without um, some work experience, but I would say, like, please go and do what you think you're interested in, because you could find out that it's really not exactly what you're interested in, and you don't want to have spent all that time and all that money, um, and most people will be paying for graduate school long after they're out of graduate school, uh, before you know, you know, that that's exactly what you want to do. Um, and so I just, I like, if I were there, I would be holding my hands up in the air and saying, I, you know, I ask you please wait. Um, and and there's so many different paths in this work. Well, I mean, here at NDI, there are a lot of people with PhDs. Um, and at AFSC, there were a bunch of folks with PhDs, but there were also people who didn't have them and had just a lot of amazing field experience. Um, and so I would just really, that, that field experience and that experience in the in the world, like just working, you know, whether it's a, you know in Indianapolis or India, um, I think is what will really get you far and what will kind of like get like everyone can have a PhD. I mean, not everyone, but conceivably, if you're at Amherst, like everyone that can have a PhD. Uh, but what's really going to set you apart is the like practical experience that you have. Well, Scott and Piper. Do you agree with that? And looking in your own environments, work environments, not assuming you're going to stay there forever, but what what's what are some common elements of those people who are doing those jobs at senior levels? Well, I'll start because I can be pretty quick. They, I work with a lot of people who have my same position at different organizations, so other clean water advocates at places like NWF, CR club groups like that. I am probably 20 years junior to every single person I work with. Um, who's at my same level. There's definitely people my age, but who are, you know, a couple rungs below me. And I am so thankful I did not go to grad school right after I graduated. I'm thinking about going to law school in the future. Um, but the experience that I've been able to have and the exposure to these, you know, to different things and working with the group that I ended up working with has allowed me to be on the same par with a lot of these folks. And many of them went to law school. 
Um, but, you know, it's pretty unique to be in a position where I'm, you know, three and a half going on four years out of school and able to do the things that I get to do. And I have plenty of friends and know people who apply to the job I have who just graduated law school who do not get the job I have. And it is a tough job market out there, but coming out of Amherst, you have a lot going for you. So I am, again, in the field of go do something for two years, go do something for four years, get out there, get the exposure. And you know, if I wanted to do what I'm doing right now for the rest of my life, I would not go to any law school or any grad school because I would be way better off spending three years perfecting what I do now than, you know, I can learn to read legislation and write legislation. I already write legislation and I didn't go to law school and I can learn how to do that by doing the job I do. I'm not saying that's the same for everyone, but I think it is incredibly important to get out there and do it. Find something where you, you find a job where you're not someone's assistant and you're actually doing things and you'll reap the benefits, I believe. And it'll look better on your resume at the end of the day when you do apply for law school or whatever you want to apply for. And when you leave law school, you'll be more competitive or yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Scott? So I'm, I'm going to agree wholeheartedly that I think it's really valuable uh, to get out and, and work after school, at least for a little bit, particularly in a public policy field. Um, what I found is that a lot of the people who I was actually even competing with when I had just graduated from were people who were graduating from public policy programs. It didn't seem to me like having a, a public policy degree unto itself was giving people much of a leg up in the job market. And I actually found that sort of the analytical skills that I got from just my undergraduate economics and political science education was more than enough to get me to where I needed to be to be able to teach myself the things that I needed to know um, in order to be sort of competitive, both, I guess, in the job marketplace, but also right when I started. Uh, so I have a little bit of a different uh, perspective on graduate schools, and part of that is because I do, po I, I guess my background since I've graduated is more policy analysis um, rather than sort of being on the ground or doing advocacy. Um, you know, I, I think that to do, and I, I tend, I've done a lot of economic policy analysis, and most of the people who are higher up do have PhDs. Um, and I think that in sort of the policy analysis world, there is a little bit of a glass ceiling if you don't eventually have some type of a graduate degree. That doesn't mean that it needs to be a, a PhD, but, but I think that you know, most of the people who I look at who are uh, sort of more senior will have, either, will have a PhD or they'll have um, a law degree or they'll have some type of advanced degree. Although there are some who have been very, very successful sort of working their way up through the rank, I mean, working their way up, up through the hill. Um, um, it, it's a, it seems, I mean, I think there's a different path for everybody, but for most of the people who, who I work with do have some type of a, 